beautiful curly hair. <laughs> and um, she was there. I don't know if this was an angel or what. She was there at almost every abortion. She would hop clinics or something. Like, that's weird, right? But when I saw her, she would always look at me. She'd go, this is the last time, Diamond. And I'd go, okay, and I'd be back. She'd be like, we can help you. It's the last time. And, and one time she told me, she was like, I know. When I, first, when I saw her, I was embarrassed to see her. She's like, it's okay. And I was like, you know, and, and, it, and I had to do it. She was there when I had to do it without medication. And I was like, um, uh, I was embarrassed. And she was like, don't be embarrassed. I know it hurts. I know it's painful. Um, but you got to just... She's like, you're not gonna be able to get away from it until you stop doing what you know you're not supposed to do. And I was like, I'm not doing anything. I was doing drugs. <laughs> but it was just weird. I hope one day I see her again. You can feel it, right? Like, I hope one day I see her again. And I'm just like, yo, thanks, lady. She came out of nowhere. And, but, and I didn't think nothing of it until she was at the Annapolis Clinic. And then she, I was at the Baltimore Clinic and she went to the Baltimore Clinic. I said, what are you doing here? And she just kind of looked at me. She was like, mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And then there was another angel, this guy. Uh, I think it was my very last one, something like that. And, um, Oh God, a lot of the abortion memories, because of how painful they were, I tried to block those memories out. Like I actively tried to block those ones out because of the, the, just the agony of ripping that out of your body. Um, um, and I, luckily I have this thing where if I'm in a lot of pain, I pass out, but I couldn't afford it. And I told him, I think I told you guys this too. I told him, I was like, well, <laughs> He was like, is there any family or friends? I was like, I really can't tell anybody. She was like, he was like, what about your boyfriend? I was like, uh, if I tell him, I'm probably gonna die. And he paused. He was like, you know, I have a sister that goes through, went through some shit like that. And I fucking, I could hear the anger in his voice. He was like, I can't stand, I can't stand when a man does that to a woman, I hate it. And he was like, all the places that are supposed to give you a fund, because they have a fund for people that can't afford the abortion. And he was like, all the places are closed, but you know what, I'm gonna push it through, and I'll just deal with it. And if that wasn't an angel, if that wasn't an animal angel, man. Ooh, wait, we already have it. We are already good. Yeah, I just know, Zeta, what you got? <coughs> Bruh, I found the other day I found um, some paperwork from one of my abortions. Oh, what is this? Oh, n no, thank you, but okay. <laughs> but you can, yeah, you can feel that shit, bruh. Like, you can feel it. You know, yes. And I was so scared. I was like, if I don't get this abortion, and the thing is, I so in Maryland, I think you have to be 13 weeks and like six days, or, or 14 and six days, whatever it was, and that's your cutoff date. And I was like, one day before the cutoff date, and he let it through. Because if I had to wait, I would have had to have the kid, and I'd have been stuck with that motherfucker. And y'all wouldn't have known me. I'd have probably been dead. I mean, he probably would have killed me. I'd have killed myself. But man, I was like, what type of uh, angel are you? Who are you, sir? Those are two people I hope I see again in, under good circumstances. Is that guy and um, that lady. Or I just, we manifest good things. Well, we forgot to do our manifestations. We have to manifest good things for them. Wait, why were you in New York, New York by yourself? You're from South Carolina. You were just lost. Why? Why would you go to New York by yourself? I mean, you are a man, but you're still a human. That's the worst. In Brooklyn? Truth. 
Were you suicidal? That's a suicide mission. You not Spider-Man? Wait. Is Spider-Man from Queens? No, the other guy is. I don't have to tell you where you're wrong. You already know. Okay? It's back in the past. You already know. <coughs> I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell you. That was a cool hit. God damn it. I think I went to put the abortion stories that run. Oh! Oh, shit. Okay. Up on uh, the YouTube. You know, I don't ever want to bring up me bad memories for you or pain, so if I do, I'll just shut up. But the more you tell me about your mom, the more she reminds me a little bit of myself, but a heel version. Like, I'm glad she was like that. Because, you know, there's a lot of moms, including my own idiot mama, who would have been like, well, you go out there for our baby. Why? I don't know. I'm glad that you had, especially as a young African-American man, like, thank, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I'm sensitive to the other side, and I hope one day I just so happen to 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 have a dream about or something that way I can be like, yo, you did a good job. I hope you know that. You did a good ass job. Thank God. Cause you could have easily turned out to be a uh -oh, polo! Not polo. To be polo. Jesus. <laughs> it could have went so many different ways. You could have been dead. You could have been like me. You could have been robbed. Lord Jesus. They could have sold you into slack slavery. Slack. Slack slavery. They could have got your butt. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Everything I have, don't I? Yeah. Meow! Ha ha! Woo! It's super strong. <coughs> Merp. You think so? Yeah. I don't like to say, you know. I, I, it's a funny thing with me and fate because I like to be in control of my own destiny. But sometimes, like God, on TikTok last year, he said, if you take this job, it was literally the TikTok of a dude talking to God going, you take this job, you're going to be broke. And dude was going, what the fuck am I supposed to do, God? I got real life bills. You ain't providing shit. And I took the job and what happened, truth? I'm broke as a joke on Coke, no Coke. Like, and I'm wondering, like, was he about to drop me a million or some shit? Like... I don't know, but like, sometimes, I hate saying that to people that have like real life issues like grief or, you know, especially things that I can't understand. But then I see shit happen, I'm like, but it's almost like a, uh oh. Yeah! Wait, wait! Please don't hurt me. Bye now! Bye now! Bye now!
Oh my god, stop. What's going on? Oh my god! No! Oh! Come on, Diamond! Come on! No! Move, stupid fuck! Uh, uh, okay. Yes, I'm like, God, like, I have no money, no help, no nothing. Like, unless you are dropping me $2,500 today, how can I trust you? Let me see this. Boom, what's this one? How about body image? 33 ways to boost your body. No. Eight, that was for everybody. Eight ways to overcome body image. Um, I could be positive poly for men. How would we, I'd have to put, all right, we, we'd have to draw that. I, did, I need to know what positive poly would look like. Eight ways to overcome body image issues in men. Cause you know, we're all about fitness and health here and nobody ever, ever talks about body image issues in men. Ever, ever, ever. I have a lot of men that come to me, never gonna name them, but I have a lot of men that come to me and de uh, they deal with body dysmorphic disorder and they deal with um, uh, just body image issues, period. And it, you know, here's the thing with me, I'm pro body shaming in a way, okay? I'm more of a, if you gonna call one motherfucker fat, then, or you say, oh, uh, make fun of motherfuckers heights and dick size, well maybe you get your weight made fun of, and vice versa. If you gonna make fun of bitches weight, then you get your height and dick size made fun of. But if you gonna, um, the difference is you can control your weight, baby, but um, it's huge. Body image issues are huge in the male com community. I get a lot of messages about it, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But, um, if, if I believe in shaming, if it's going, if it's something you can control, and not shaming when it's nothing you control. You can't control your height or your dick size. You can't control what you do with it. You can't control your weight, but you can't control your titty size or your ass size. You know, without major surgeries. So, but I also believe that if you're gonna shame then either shame all the way or don't shame at all. It really does bother me that it's cool to shame, uh, to, it's not cool to body shame women and we have the body positivity movement, but this, at the same time I hear all the time talking about ugly men this and unattractive men that and they're just hard, they're hard with it. They're out there with it and I hear it all the time. So obviously it's not everybody, not everybody is like that. Hey, there's a lot of wonderful people out there that aren't cunts. Then there's also a lot of cunts out there. So here's eight ways to overcome your body image issues in men. And we focus on body here all the time. That's all we do. Do, 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 do. Men have to be tall, dark, handsome, and strong, and they have to, as they have to earn for their family, is a general notion. They are also brought up with the idea that it is girlish or a sign of weakness to cry. Thus, men are expected to hide their emotions. This can cause feelings of inadequacy as they grow up and encounter situations where they have the urge to cry. Well-built body with a good height is the perceived sign of manliness. A lot of people, I did, I did, you're right. See, I told you, didn't I just say I was pro body shaming, but I'm also a cunt. And no, I didn't call him ugly. I said he was different looking. I expected him to be super attractive. Okay, I said he was different. I said different looking. <laughs> but I'm also a shit. And I just said I was pro body shaming. Thank you. <laughs> but I'm pro all the way shaming, okay? I give it out, but I can take it. Giggity. Anyway, the turmoil of body image disturbance leads to depression, low self-esteem, and an overemphasis of on achieving desired perfect looks. This also results in low motivation and withdrawal from social events. A lot of times, and this is for everybody, men, women, everybody in between, your, the way your body is shaped or what your body looks like or whatever, um, that people equate it to how masculine you are or how feminine you are. So if you're overweight, then you're not perceived as feminine. If you're short, then you're not perceived as masculine. That's a lot, and that's the, the fucked up thing. Um, and I, don't ask me where it comes from, I don't know. Um, 
Here, a few pointers to overcome this body shaming though. Number one, our appearance, height, weight. Okay, asterisk. Our appearance and height are all inborn gifts just like the color of our eyes or hair. We cannot change it. Um, you can change your weight. Uh, there are certain people that can't. Pre people with Prada Willie syndrome cannot control their weight. Um, and people with uh, severe insulin resistance or severe metabolism resistance uh, or problems can't control their weight. Most people who sit there and say, oh, I have a slow metabolism, they don't. Because if you did have a slow metabolism, you'd have a whole host of other issues. You would be cold all the time. You would have other problems. You would have this and that and this and that. So a lot of times you just don't count your calories right. So. This says our appearance, height, and weight are all inborn gifts. That's not true. Your appearance and height, and for a very, very minute portion of pe uh, per population of our society, weight are inborn gifts, just like the color of our eyes or hair. We cannot change it, but you can change your appearance, mo kind of, and you can change your weight if you so desire. Healthy acceptance of oneself helps to build self-esteem. When we value and accept ourselves as we are, ooh. We're going to put a lot of asterisks on this one. We won't be disappointed by challenges and can handle them well. Well, exactly, with Peter Griffin. And, and fat is viewed as dumb. But, okay, Peter is kind of dumb. But he's also kind of smart in his own way. Um, so, healthy, it, it does say healthy acceptance of yourself. Accept the things that you can't change about yourself. Accept your bone structure. Accept your hairline. Accept your height except your vaginal shape. Um, a lot of people make fun of my vagina because of the way it looks. Well, nobody's fucked me has, so. Um, except your lopsided booty cheeks. I have different size booty cheeks. You don't have to accept everything about yourself. If sitting there accepting every, sing every single thing about yourself makes you not change. And on the inside, you're going, I know that I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm accepting all the dumb shit about me. And now I'm not changing for the better. And now I'm still feeling sorry for myself. And, but I'm sitting here lying to myself every day. Don't do that. Accept what you can change and don't, and then don't accept and make sure you change. Wait, accept what you can't change and change what you can change. There's a serenity prayer that says that, but I don't know the Bible that well. Number three, highlight the things you like and admire in yourself. That's wonderful. It could be your smile, the way you make other feels, or your style of communication. Truth, one of the coolest things I think about, uh, uh, you should highlight about yourself, is that you are very empathetic to people. You know how to, like, you, you're a human human. Like, you know how to, like, how to help people, and you're really quick with it. It's like a natural thing. Like, if you hadn't suffered so much, I could definitely see you being a therapist. You could still do it, because you're really, really good at that. So, highlight your innate gifts. Um, if it's physical attractiveness, cool. If it's mental attractiveness or you're amazing at certain things, make sure you highlight those. Tell yourself that every day <laughs> or at least once a week. Change the way you see things and things you see will change. Boom. That's beautiful. Quote that and put that somewhere. That's nice. Someone screenshot that. I like that. Number four, crying, feeling upset, or expressing, expressing emotions are all signs of strength. It helps you become humane and others connect with you better. I just told you earlier, I have a low emotional intelligence. I am, I am dumb in emotional intelligence. Um, crying and feeling upset, upset and expressing your emotions healthily are, are big signs of strength, especially in men because it's hard for you guys to do that and to be accepted by society when you do that without people calling you a bitch all the time. Make sure if you do express your emotions to someone and then they flip it around and tell you how they that makes them feel, uh, you go uh, to someone else and tell them to go fuck themselves. I like that quote, I do. Number five, take a realistic and optimistic approach towards life situations. For instance, if your weight is your reason for concern, then tell yourself there are ways to reducing it over time. That's wonderful. I like that they did that. Even though earlier they just said, never mind. It's okay. Let, let them be positive. Analyze the perception you have about, number six, analyze the perception you have about male body image. Ask yourself if you are simply going to the generally perceived notions or is there a possibility of thinking beyond the rigid mindsets? What? Oh, I guess analyze what you think. 
the male body image is supposed to be? Why are you comparing yourself to that? Or is that just something that you've been told your whole life that you're supposed to look like? Number seven, turn your limitations to your strengths. There are always perks in everything. <laughs> Sorry, dress. For example, your soft voice could mean that people take you to be soft nature of soft nature and polite. And there is nothing wrong with being soft. Being soft is good in a lot of situations. You don't always want to be hard and rigid. Then you'll never be able to relate to anybody. Then you'll be sitting there. Imagine if you have a dick and it's hard all the time. Then you're uncomfortable. A lot of times you're going to be in some uncomfortable situations, right? You don't want to be hard all the time. And number eight, learn to appreciate your inner beauty. Always remember that you are a beautiful person. Believe in yourself. Unless you are a legal psychopath, you are a beautiful person on the inside. You have wonderful qualities of value. So make sure you highlight those. And those are eight ways to overcome body image issues in men. I think that was wonderful. There we go. So tomorrow, uh, I will let you guys know what time the stream is. It'll be between five and six. Unless something crazy happens, I don't know. Uh, yes? What's deep? Giggity? Up. Oh. <laughs> it's a bug? Is it a bug? I don't know. Oh, you know, hey, I never said I was beautiful on the inside. That's why I make myself beautiful on the outside. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do some highlight reels. I'm gonna go eat some spinach and do some highlight reels. I appreciate you guys for being here. Thank you for watching and I'll message up. I'll, I'll be in the Discord. Hopefully people will be back tomorrow, but if not, it'll be just me and you. Bye. Stay skinny. Make sure you stay skinny.